Hi folks, uh, this is Luke with the Exiles and I thought I'd do a quick video response to Corrugated Cavalier's video on Fiori's Spear, which he put out yesterday. Um, in his video he references a few of ours, uh, which we've put out on YouTube, mainly the beginner's introduction to um, Spear and I think our poster video as well. So. If you're not familiar with Corrugated Cavalier, uh, check him out, go like, go subscribe to his channel. Um, he's relatively new to Fiore, but he's been putting out some good content, so go check him out. We'll put a link to his video uh, below this. So, the videos he's referenced of ours, um, they don't actually cover all of our interpretation, of every single nuance of our interpretation. So, I thought I'd go over a few of those and ju just elaborate a little bit on the previous videos that we've done. Because obviously it's a big subject, you can't cover it all in one video, and it depends on the context of the video. So, um, a few things that have cropped up from looking at Corrugated Cavalier's um, videos and from him talking with us is there are some slight differences between us um, and there are some slight perceived differences. So, first things first, I thought I'd just mention a few of our theories and ideas about the pasta. As we all should know by now, if we've been checking out the other videos, um, there are six pasta, three on the right, three on the left. The right side of the ones, um, the right hand's towards the tip, left side of the ones, left hand is towards the tip. Uh, if you're not familiar with any of the poster videos, then you can check ours out. We can uh, pop, pop a link to those in there. And also, uh, like I say, Corrugated Cavalier is also covered in there. Uh, you can find other stuff out there as well. Um, but our particular take on the poster. So, one thing that's interesting is the naming of the poster for the spear section. If I quickly grab a sword. So, in the sword section, Fury names this. Tutipoti de Fel, where the sword is sticking pretty much 90 degrees out from your lead foot. If it's in the middle of the body, it is uh, Poti de Fel on Mezzano. Okay, so Mezzano is in the middle, Tuta is out to the side. He doesn't obey the same convention in the spear, he mixes it up. So, for the spear section, Fiori is now calling this Porte de Ferro So it's not exactly the same as sword um, Porte de Ferro, whether it's tuta or mezza, because obviously mezza, <laughs> you can't get it in front of your body, and tuta, it's not quite parallel, uh, it's not quite 90 degrees um, to your lead foot, it's sticking out forwards a little bit, yeah? So it's almost as mezza as you can get it while still being comfortable. So basically the book starts coming in towards your left hip, okay? Obviously if you're moving about, if you're sparring or whatever, you know, the tip might drift a little bit, but that seems to be what he appears to be showing in the manuscript, okay? So he's now calling this Potter Fellonzar. If the sphere comes up, then this is Tutor Potter Fell, okay? So it's almost like a donor position if you're with a sword, or it looks like a donor position if you have a sword, but now he's calling it Tutipoti de Fer. So our theories as to why he's changing the naming convention for this are, for a start, it's Poti de Ferro because you can't do the same sort of actions as you would do from Posti Donna. So you're not delivering blows um, and cuts with the spear. Yeah, it's more of a covering action you're making, as in put it fell. Iron door, iron door of protection, all that sort of thing. That's the sort of concept. So that's why it's put it fell rather than possibly donna. It doesn't do the same actions that possibly donna does. It's, it's more of a covering action. Okay? Um, and then why is this tuta and this mezza? So, our theory on this is, it's to do with um, how much action the spear is making and how much power is in the action, okay? So, from Metza, if a thrust is coming in, you're covering with an increase, 
yeah, covering centre line and then you're coming in. So you're basically making a kind of a beat, trying to keep your point on line and then for a spin. I'll talk about footwork in a little bit. So it's making that action, yeah? But from tutor, it's making a much larger and more powerful action, yeah? So it's a little, a little bit sort of pulsativa, if you want to think of pulsativa, stabile, instabile kind of concept. There's a bit more power to it there, coming in. So this is our theory, but we think this is a full action, hence tutor. This is a half action, hence it being mezza. Um, like I say, that's our theory. We might be wrong. We don't know because he never explicitly tells you. Okay? The footwork. So in the beginner's introduction to Spear video um, that was taken at our moot, which is the exam's kind of grand gathering um, a couple of years ago, I show uh, two different bits of footwork for getting into the exchange of points with the Spear. The first one, I show on the right hand side um, from whichever poster, and it is um, a crease followed by a mezzavolta. Okay? So you've got the crease, take the centre line, mezzavolta. A crease, mezzavolta. In this scenario, we're imagining the attackers attacking from the right hand side, so I'm covering on the inside line. Okay? If the attacker was attacking from the left hand side, then I'd be increasing the opposite direction. Because I now want to get onto the outside line. Yeah? If the sphere is coming in this side, I don't want to be going into it because it's a bit riskier. Okay? So whether you go left or right of your opponent is entirely up to you. You can go either way. Yeah? Both are doable, both are possible. And again, it depends on how you're moving around, it depends on the distance, uh, it depends on um, angles of attack, okay? From the left hand side, again in the video I was showing the outside line of footwork, um, where you crease over to your left and then you mess the ball to around, okay? So basically you're taking the centre line there and then you're in. But you're moving around the attack this time. Yeah? There. From which other posture. Yeah? So, again, you don't always have to do that footwork. It's got its advantages and disadvantages. Maybe you want to take the outside line. Uh, maybe you're further over to that side of the body when we start attacking. Whatever it is, whatever it is that makes you take that line, it's fine. Yeah? As so long as you survive, it's all good. Um, however, you can also go to the inside line. You don't have to go around. So again, it might depend on what side of the body they're attacking you with the spear. Um, from the right side, I might tend to go this way. From the left side of their body, I might tend to go this way. Okay? So that's just one reason why I might go one way or the other. Um, a lot of it's also personal preference. There's no real right and wrong. So long as, in our mind, so long as you're actually moving offline either way, it's good, yeah? You don't want to just stay where you are and try and defend it because then you're not getting your body offline, okay? Because spear is so linear and thrusts in general are so linear, you want to try and change the line, okay? And then end up with a position of advantage, whether or not it's inside line or outside line. Okay? One other thing worth mentioning while we're on this left hand side is I really glossed over the moving backwards in the um, video from the moon because basically we do it all the time, it's not that complicated um, and that is a class two members of the exile, so we all know what we're doing, we all basically do foot movement the same way. But it's worth mentioning that um, we agree with Corrugated Cavalier, 
he was saying about whether or not you turn straight away, either on the ball or the heel of your feet, and kind of two to vault straight away. Um, we don't like that either. We tend to put in the acrosale before we move. So it will start off with a foot adjustment of the back foot before stepping back, and it's much more positive. It gives you a much more stable position, we feel. So, yeah, exactly the same page as corrugated cavalier on that. Right, so if we look at uh, one of the biggest differences between our current interpretation and corrugated cavalier's current interpretation, um, the big sort of divergence between us um, that's evident from the video is in the use of Dente de Cingale. Okay? So, if you read Fiori's manuscript, he talks about covering low thrusts with the butt and high thrusts with the tip. In Corrugated Cavalier's video, he was doing both in the same kind of fashion. So, he was making the increase, covering, and coming in to the point on position, yeah. So, decrease cover, point on position, thrust. And that was whether or not the thrust was high or low, okay? So, we do it slightly different. If it's a low thrust, yeah, you do it that way, and then thrust in. So we're covering with the lower part of the half, and then getting point on to count thrust. But if it's high, then we go into the same sort of cover as we do from all the other postures. So we open the hands up and then thrust. So we're moving the tip on line with the first initial um, acrosite. So that's a minor difference. Uh, personally, I prefer the way we do it because I'm getting point on line quicker. But it, the con of it is you have to recognise whether it's a high or a low thrust. Okay? So, pros and cons. Um, so that's the big difference I can see between our interpretation and Corrugated Cavalier's video. Apart from that, we seem to be pretty much on the same page. Um, Finestra. So, the thing about Finestra is you're having to hold the spear quite far down uh, towards the butt of it, because to make any action from it, you need to be able to clear your body, yeah? If you're too far down the haft, the butt end will get stuck, okay? So it means you can't transition from one side to the other. So, if you're on the end of it, you're then covering in a sort of corkscrewing action according to our interpretation, yeah? So it's coming in there, and it's there, okay? The thing about that is, it can leave you in quite a weak position. Because you're so far down the spear, if somebody is halfway down or towards the tip of your spear, it can be quite easy to then displace that tip, yeah? So, you've got a couple of options. One is to keep the uh, tip pointing on, at your opponent, but to move your hands as you step in with the metabolter. There. To land in a much more solid position. Okay? Another thing you can do, uh, that, that gives you this kind of common defence option, yeah? But another thing you can do is you can couch the lance. Um, you see, an illustration of this in the half sword section of the Pisani Dossi, where I'll grab a sword again. So, half sword section where in Brevilla Serpentina, in the Getty, is much lower, whereas in the Pisani Dossi, it's kind of couched up into the armpit, almost like you would do with a lance um, on horseback. Yeah? What that does is it locks it against your body and gives you a very solid first in position. Okay? So, you can do the same with the spear um, from Finestra. So if you cover it there, you can then lock it in 
and get a much more solid position there. Yeah, it's much more harder now to displace uh, the tip, even though I am still quite far down towards the butt end of it. And I can start broadening the uh, distance between hands if I need to, but that is much more solid than that. Okay, so as you come through, come in, couch. And again, you can do that from either side. Uh, so, I think that's all I really wanted to mention right now. Obviously, again, there's probably a whole bunch of things that I'm still forgetting, or that we've still not covered from our particular interpretation, um, such as all the how you attack with the spear rather than how you defend. So it's all that sort of stuff. Um, but hopefully that's added a little bit of extra context to the videos that we've put out previously and clarified a few um, a few of our uh, interpretation decisions. Okay? Right, cheers folks.